This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you in partnership with TKM Inc. TKM stands for The King's Men. They pride themselves on being hardworking, honest, and dependable. They put an emphasis on serving Christ by serving others. Their scope of work cover road construction, small dirt work and excavating, heavy hauling in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Georgia. They can be reached at 931-243-3958, and they are located at 10635 Clay County Highway, Moss, Tennessee, 38575. You can also find more information at benandtravis.com backslash TKM. TKM Inc. is also a sponsor of the Batify Freedom 5K and Fun Run on July the 10th at Mars Hill Bible School. We would love for you to come run with us in person or do it virtually. You can register at benandtravis.bigcartel.com. That's benandtravis.bigcartel.com. Welcome into the Helping Healing Humor podcast with Ben and Travis. I'm Travis Creasy. This is Ben Hayes, and we're coming to you from a houseboat. Houseboat. That's right. We've been struggling with that all along. A houseboat on Dale Hollow Lake, if any of you have ever been up this way, it's a beautiful lake. Uh, we've been told one of the, kind of voted one of the most beautiful lakes in the country, and I can believe it. Like oh, what yeah, we've it's seen. gorgeous. It we're uh, awesome. close to Kentucky. Yeah, we're right at the Tennessee, line. Tennessee, but right at the line. I am drinking from a fantabulous uh, Golden Girls mug. That we got out of the cabinets here, so sorry about that, Nick. We decided to take this hashtag up. squad goals, and I can't argue that, right? And uh, you know, and you got you got all the ladies. You got Dorothy, you got Blanche, you got Rose, you got Sophia. It's so an amazing I mean, mug. It's... And we're talking about conflict resolution, which we probably could do a whole podcast episode <laughs> on how the Golden Girls get it wrong. How Most get of it right? the time. Uh, Most of the time. But yeah, conflict resolution. Yeah, and uh, and by the way, before we get too far, we've got these really awesome hats on. Yeah, man. Um, TKM supported uh, our Batify 5K, Freedom 5K, and um, so we get up here, and the guy who uh, runs this company, or is a part of this company, I'm not exactly sure how all the leadership of that company works out, but um, we're staying in his uh, house boat. And he gave us these slick hats, so we thought we would point you guys that way. So Ben is going to kind of present the do's of conflict resolution, and I'm going to present the don'ts of conflict resolution, and we're going to sound kind of like country music stars here on some of these, but nonetheless... uh, You might even sing for them. I might even sing for them. You never know. You never know when these things start. So, So the first one kind of seems like an odd one to throw out there. It's one of those that just seems like, hey, this should be just a no brainer, right? But I don't think it is all the time. Oh, no. I think for uh, me, for sure. I think a lot of times we forget we need to pray first. Like if you're gonna go talk to somebody, deal with a conflict at church, with your spouse, with your kids, with friends, neighbors, whatever it is, take it to the Lord in prayer. We sing that song a lot on Sundays. Oh, yeah. I'm sure a lot of you guys do, but take it to him first. Um, you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you're not somebody who prays, um, you know, something like that, that, that kind of goes along with it would be, and I, I would encourage this for even somebody who does pray is journal it, write it down, sound it out, you know, getting it out to God, getting it out on paper too, are two really good, helpful things just to sort of know what you want to share. Certainly for those who, you know, sometimes we get caught up in a, I don't know how to pray. Yeah, well, talk to God just like you would talk to someone else. I mean, the big thing is, is the big thing is, is yeah. do it. Yeah, you know, get started. That's the thing. You know, as my wife says, perfect practice makes perfect. Um, you know, but practice, just get going. That's the beauty of it. To, to yeah, I the, hear from the, you. The other day, my son was praying, um, and you've probably experienced this with your kids, Travis, and I'm sure you guys out there have. And he was praying in the bed, and he was talking about you know, all of his friends, and he starts thanking God for all his friends, and then ta- starts telling God how much he likes to play with his friend named Paxton, and starts telling him about how that they like to play, um, you know, these certain games, and these are the things they do, and it turned from like, thank you, and help me with this, to, hey God, I just want to talk to you about what's going on with yeah. my buddies, and it was, it was really cool, because I was thinking, you know, it does become 
conversational. It should become conversational when we talk to him. Um, a lot of times we think, well, I, won't, I pray when I got to take something to him that's really big and heavy and important, and I want something. And sometimes we just need to talk to him. So I think that's that's the first go to. And I was thinking, you know, Philippians four six through seven talks about don't be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, uh, let your request be known to God, and the 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 peace of God that surpasses all comprehension will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. So. You know, I mean, it says right there, you know how much anxiety there is floating around conflict. Well, and, and the amazing thing to me is, is there are Christians out there who think that prayer is kind of like doing nothing. You know, that, uh, you know, that, that's, that's not we being, got left that's to not do being active. Pray. So well, it's the last thing we got to yeah. do. And I think that goes along with the first don't. Uh, you know, don't throw feathers in the wind. And I think that. If, if you've been church that very much. country music. Yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> I don't you know, know that there is one, but it, it sounds it, like it. You know, the, the story that comes to mind is, you know, the the gossip, the talking, and the guy finally, you know, he's kind of convicted, and he goes to the preacher and says, hey, I, you know, I've been gossiping, I've been saying all this stuff about people, and the preacher's like, well, you can get forgiveness, but, you know, you can't really reel all that in, and so he takes, a, I think it's a pillow, up to a window and, like, opens it up and lets the feathers go everywhere, and he's like, this is... Go gather them is. up. If you can and, gather up all those feathers, you can and, gather. And we have this technological advancement called social media. Advancement? Yeah. Or, is it yeah, advancement? Well, devolve the evolution or something. But you know, people want to post all that stuff. And what's amazing to me is sometimes the people will post, you know, kind of mocking prayer as you know thoughts and prayers. What does that really accomplish? And I'm like, well, probably a lot more than your social media posts. That's true. So don't go spreading feathers. Don't be throwing wet feathers in the wind. Be yeah. careful. And, you know, one of the things that I've often talked to couples about is don't go share, like especially if they're having just really hardcore issues and, you know, there's been things that have happened, maybe infidelity or whatever. If you ever think that there's a hope that you're going to keep things together, get things back together, and this really is just with friendships and everything, when you start sharing it, Like with, you know, married couples, they start sharing it with their parents or with brothers and sisters. You're going to get over it a whole lot quicker than they do. Like, so if you decide, hey, I'm going to forgive him or I'm going to forgive her, then, you know, you start working on it through therapy and through other things. And your parents and your brothers and sisters are probably not doing that. So there's going to be bigger issues later down the road because those feathers have been thrown into the wind, and there's no way to fix that. There really. are times where people want to come to me, and, and it's not in the proper context. If people want to come to me and need help, but they want to come to me, and it's going to ruin my view of someone, you know, uh, and they're not really looking for a solution. They're just looking to gossip. Right. I've been known to stick my fingers in my ear and go, la, 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 la. Yeah, I don't, like, that's I don't probably want to know not the great thing. I don't, want to, I don't want to know that. So there's another don't, but. Well, but, you know. It, it, it is, uh, it's not, it, it is kind of a do that. Don't, don't let people, if somebody's about to share something, go, hey, look, this isn't my business. And before you share it with me, I understand you're needing to vent. I'm a friend. But if this is going to cause some issues down the road, why don't, why don't you go share that with somebody, you know, in a confidential scenario who's, who's sort of separated from it together. Yep. So even though I might not lie, lie, lie in their face, I think saying, hey, I'm not, I don't want to go there, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so the, the second do, I guess, would be in conflict resolution that we would really encourage. And we talked about this a little bit tonight at the church that we were speaking at is listen. Like, do listen. And a lot of times we want to talk over people. We want our part heard. We really push for our part to be heard. And it, it's great for us to be heard. But the first thing we need to do is listen. I can't. I can't really solve a problem. I can't fix a problem unless I really know what the problem is. So I can't really fix it anyway. But a lot of times we listen to to judge. We listen to have a smart like, comment back. Oh, We've done that time. all of our lives at each other. Um, we listen to be able to reply back in some smart aleck way. Um, or to defend ourselves, we listen for little things that we can go, well, that's not exactly what it was, you know, and we, we throw those out. And then the third thing we do is we, sometimes we we just listen to, you know, get our defense together. We're not really listening. We're, we're trying to get our defense, and 
or we're trying to fix it. Like I'm trying to fix. So I'm thinking about when Travis is telling me about his problem, I start thinking about fixes before he really finishes talking and I've missed part of it. So I think it's important um, for us to, to really listen to just hear it. Like I want to hear what you have to say, not just, you know, listen for a way to reply to you. So, you know, James 1, everyone should be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. I think that's that's one that we certainly have to think Even about. Even my two young ones, six and five years old, like, she's toppling me. That's her their phrase for it. She's talking over me, you know. She, you're not listening to me. She's yeah. not letting me talk or he's not letting me talk. And so that's a big deal. And then number two on the don'ts is... Digging up bones. Digging up bones. You're supposed to do the backup. Digging up bones. There we go. All right. Uh, you don't keep a record, right? That's what love. Right. Love does not keep a record. First, First Corinthians, Corinthians 13. 13. Yeah. So. I mean, that the idea of don't don't sit there and dig up the past. If you said I forgave you, then just forgive. I mean, that's kind of, I know that's tough. I mean, the, the whole standard God sets up of forgive and forget is really tough for us to do as humans. So um, we do have a hard time forgetting, but try not to dig it up every single time because every time you start, I think um, doesn't keep record uh, of wrongdoing. You know, there's different ways that that 1 Corinthians 13, 5 is, is translated, but, you know, wrong suffered. You know, I'm not, I'm not keeping up with the things that you did to me. I'd say um, along with that, what, what heals you down, you know, I know as a guy, I'd just rather you, you know, I'd rather my wife just tell me if that's bothering her. Like, don't let it build up to the point that all of a sudden there's this explosion out of nowhere because you've been burying bones so that you can dig them up later. Um, I'd much rather you be like, okay, that's annoying, stop. You know, rather than, it's kind of like when you got something in your teeth and you're, <laughs> you're walking around with something in your teeth and you just wish somebody would have been like, Hey man, you got something. Would you tell? Would you, know? you tell me about that? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think digging up bones is certainly one. And then the uh, the third thing for the dues would um, would be on the flip side of the listening is communicate assertively, like tell each other what you need, but be careful how you do that. First of all, like I need something versus saying, "Well, Travis, you don't ever do this." You know, yeah. me saying, you don't ever do this, you always do this, you're always doing this. You're using those, like, big words like always and never, um, which are probably never good to use. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I used them against themselves. But Never the, accurate. They're never accurate, yeah. right? So, you know, it, it, you don't want to use those kinds of, of words and, and those kinds of statements. You never take out the trash, you never do this. Um, they're critical, they're criticisms. Rather than, you know, I, I need you to do this or I want you to do this because it would make me feel a certain way. And some of the people who've been to me and talked to me in premarital counseling are probably like, oh, I've heard that before. And that, you know, uh, a lot of them have come back and said, I remember you saying that. And I try to remember to do that. But that's a really hard phrase just to work into our vernacular. Is that the right word? Yeah. Nice. So, um, you know, cool. when we start thinking about you know, things that we want to say, um, a lot of times uh, we just, we don't think about it in that way. But being, communicating assertively is me saying the things that I need to say and communicating what that means to me. Because if Travis knows that this is a need of mine, I think the relationship with Travis is strong enough that he would go, hey, I want to help meet that need. I want to do what you know, needs to be done in this scenario because, you know, I know he loves me. I love him. We've been friends all of our lives. Same thing with my wife. I know she loves me and, and, and I love her. And then with our kids and, and with our neighbors and our friends, and it's like when we know that the person has a care for us, then when we come to them and says, this is what's lacking, this is what I need, and this is how it would make me feel for it to be fulfilled, that's a whole lot different than going, you don't ever do this. You don't ever do that. You've communicated in a way that is assertive, but it's also softer than coming to them and slapping them verbally around. And I think that leads to number three of the don'ts, and that's don't break my heart, my achy, breaky heart. This is not number three. Well, I mean, that's, it, that's it kind not of plays three. in. Okay. Don't, Maybe. don't you let just your emotions to... rule, right? Don't, yeah. let, don't break my heart. Well, right? don't, don't say things and yell and scream. 
Okay. Keep yourself okay. Under I'll give you. I'll don't give break you that. my heart. I'll give you my that. My icky breaky heart. Uh, but, <laughs> well, good, good land. We we went there with we Billy did. Ray Cyrus. That's that's old school. Mm -hmm. But you know, yes, I, I think you're right though. Don't let those emotions play a part in it because you know when we start letting emotions um, really rule the day, they will really mess up the day. Um, we don't think clearly when we're emotional. Our, our emotional brain and our intellectual brain, right brain, left brain, whatever you want to call it, they do not play well together. And so as I get emotional, I don't think well. That, think, that includes being hangry, right? Yes, there's a sign over there that talks about hangry, anger and it gives us the definition. Um, but you, you've coached football for a while, right? And you know as well as I do that towards the end of a football game or even in the middle of a football game, you know, there's times where the fans and the coaches are going, what were you thinking? Yeah, you and get tired. Uh, you get tired and you go back to undisciplined. And that's all kinds of levels. You look at uh, Christianity, right? Uh, even the first century, the temptation was to go back to Judaism. They're, they kind of got a pass. They yeah. had a, a uh, you know, this, this ability to worship Yahweh or worship God. And so it was really a temptation for early Christians to go, well, let's just go back to Judaism. And so a lot of the scriptures warn against, hey, don't go back to the law. You know, there's no freedom there. Uh, and so all kinds of levels of not letting your emotions rule, right? Yeah, and when you think about um, that as well, you, with the emotions, we've talked about halt, SB, you know, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stressed, bored. You know, those are, those are a, a pretty good knowledge. You know that when those things are happening, you're at your weakest point. And so when I go to talk to you about something, if I'm hungry or you're hungry, I'm angry, you're angry, I'm lonely, you're lonely, tired, bored, stressed. You know, those things are a part of it. We automatically know we're coming in and the emotional level could get higher. So pick the pick a better time. I've had couples tell me, well, you know, we argued till 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And I'm like, that's, that's probably not a good idea. And they're like, well, the Bible says don't let the sun go down in your wrath. I said the sun went down like four hours ago. <laughs> so stop arguing and go to bed. And wake up the next morning and make that the next day's goal. But you can't, you can't, you can't really argue well when you're emotional. So if you're tired and you're hungry and you're lonely, you're angry, you're tired, bored, stressed. If any of those things are present, probably not a great time. Um, find a good time. Talk about a good time. Hey, we're gonna sit down at breakfast in the morning. We're gonna sit down at supper. We're gonna, you know, find a time to resolve these conflicts. Then you can, you know, do that better. And I think something that you mentioned earlier, too, in our discussion before we got live was watch your body language. Like, you know, when we're emotional, sometimes we're communicating things non-verbally that we don't really maybe mean to communicate. So um, those are the do's and don'ts yeah, the of do's, conflict resolution. Do's of conflict resolution and don'ts of country music. That's true. That was so, Randy Travis. You should totally go with some Randy Travis. So if you want to review, number one, uh, here are the three conflict resolution do's. Pray, listen, communicate assertively. Conflict resolution don'ts. Go for Don't it. Don't break my heart, my achy breaky heart. You're killing me. <laughs> Don't let emotions rule. <laughs> Don't dig up bones. And don't throw feathers in the wind. And there you have it. Ben and Travis... Conflict resolution. Straight from a houseboat. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor Podcast. Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living, at benandtravis.com and receive all of our helping healing and humor extra content directly in your inbox. We look forward to having you join us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.